Good afternoon, Open Door Church. How you doing? It's uh, Andy here. Hope you had a wonderful uh, Sunday. Uh, really enjoyed yesterday. A thank you to Ollie and to David, and of course our production team, Steve and Sean, for putting on our Sunday meetings on Facebook Live. Thank you so much for that. You're such a blessing, guys. Um, I really loved having the coffee afterwards. That was just so cool. Uh, the Zoom meeting where people turn up uh, just to chat. Some of you I haven't seen for so long. It was just like ages. So it's just lovely to see you on a Zoom meeting. Hooray. Uh, um, I'm an extrovert, so I just love being with people. So um, it's just so great to have been there at that coffee. That is fantastic. So I hope you're having a fantastic um, bank holiday Monday, you're resting and, uh, and staying alert and staying inside and, and doing all the things that you should do to keep yourself safe during this period of time. So, daily devotionals. This week we start on a new psalm. So, this is Psalm 139, one of my favorite psalms. Uh, we're going to read the first six verses, look at the first two. Let's read. You have searched me, Lord. And you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Psalm 139 is a tremendous psalm because it answers some of the massive questions really of human existence who are we who really knows us how were we formed is there a plan for my life is there a sense of prophetic destiny in my existence which is revealed in a master plan and with a master planner if there is, what is that sense of destiny? What is that master plan? Now, whilst some argue that Zechariah was the author because of a scribbling note, apparently on a version of the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament, it's mostly accepted that the writer of this psalm is none other than once again King David of Jerusalem, that great worship leader. And he wrote the psalms for worship. In fact, this uh, psalm is the first one since Psalm 109, that had been written for the choir, for congregational worship. And so therefore, these are questions, massive questions, that aren't just for an individual, they're for every human being. Who am I? Am I loved? Am I alone? Is there a great plan? Well, straight away, verse 1, we have an amazing relational insight. King David writes that he has been searched, he is known and none other than the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, in your Bibles in English, means this, Yahweh, Yahweh, the personal name of God. You see, we are not known by a force, we are not known by some abstract theory, we aren't known by some uninterested deity or some alien, we are known by God. God, Yahweh, who has made himself known by giving us his very name, by God the Trinity, who is made known to us by Jesus Christ and his death upon the cross, that we can make our way to know God the Father, to know God, applied to us by God the Holy Spirit. We are known by God. God knows us. God knows you. God knows me. David writes in the psalm, Lord, you know me, you know me, me individually, me. God is intimately acqu acquainted with your person, your character, your history, and the very core of your being, of who you are. He knows everything about you. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows you that much. When I became a Christian a long, long time ago, um, I used to listen to uh, 
heavy metal bands like ACDC, I made them, Black Sabbath, Saxon. But when I became a Christian, um, for me, uh, it it became something that was uh, just not good for my spiritual walk. I felt the Holy Spirit convict me that I needed to smash what was then hundreds of pounds of vinyl records and probably thousands of pounds now because for me at that point it was right that I obeyed the Holy Spirit and I just got rid of that music out of my life because it was doing me no good Uh, and then after I got rid of all that music I just thought well what is there what is there in Christian life and the only thing that I knew was Sir Cliff Richard who by the way along with my 82 year old mother we went to go and see concert last year at uh, the Royal Navy College in London he was very good anyway only Christian record that I found at that point was an album called Small Corners. And it had this refrain in one of the songs. It said, you know me better than I know myself. You know me better than I know myself. Time after time, you've shown it to be true. No one loves me like you. God knows you better than you know yourself. Time after time, he shows it to be true that no one loves us like God. God knows you. He knows every intimate detail about your life. He has searched you, it says uh, there in, in verse 1. He searched you. The Hebrew word here for search is the same word used in uh, Job. 28 verse 3 when it talks about uh, miners searching out gold and silver just digging searching and searching for it he searched you he's searching your heart beloved he's searching your heart he knows you better than your spouse better than your parents better than your boss even better than you know yourself there is never Never been a time when you have been unknown to God. There's no area of your life that is unknown to God because you are constantly under his observation. The slightly creepy police song is true. Every step you take, every move you make, I'll be watching you. Every step you take, every move you make, every vow you break, everything, every promise you make, every action you take, God will be watching you. One of God's names in the Old Testament is El Roy. It means the God who sees all, the God who watches. God announces to Jeremiah, he has been watching Jeremiah 1 verses 11 and 12. And I'm, I've heard, sure, you've heard the illustration before that every single snowflake is individual. I've also been told that every single voice box is individual every human being that has ever been that will ever be that is on the earth now has a distinct voice box that is known to god as that person that means when you pray with seven billion people around the world when they speak to god when you pray god hears it's you each one of us is handmade by God and known intimately by God you're of such tremendous worth to God you're loaded down with such purpose and dignity never despair please because you think I'm worthless nobody loves me nobody knows me oh I'm ignored by God no he has intimate knowledge of you we can be during this coronavirus coronavirus crisis just oh you know I'm just sitting here, I'm stewing every day, there's another batch of cakes, another crossword done again, more children to look after. God, God, what's going on in my life? God knows intimately everything about your life. He knows, verse 2, when you're at rest. He knows when you're active. You're like a guest in the Big Brother house or some reality TV show. You're being observed this time none other by God Almighty himself, Yahweh, who has made himself known to you. Or like Jim Carrey in The Truman Show. It's a great film. I love that film. You are under observation every single moment of your life. You're under the observation of none other by God Almighty. The Father is in heaven. And you know what? He never misjudges you. He never misinterprets you. 
What does it mean where it says he knows your thoughts from afar? Well, it means that God knows you with such intricate detail. He knows your history, your story, your ancestry, your character, and even th foreign thoughts, thoughts that at face value seem unconnected. When you do things or maybe say a random thing or act in a certain way, God knows how that's all connected because he knows your thoughts, your ancestry, your upbringing, your history. He knows everything about you. He knows absolutely everything about you. There's nothing that you can do that takes him by surprise because you are known by him. Whoa, why did I do that? You might not know. God knows. But why did he act that way? He's a bit of a strange chap. God knows why, because he knows your background. He knows your parents and your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-great-great-grandparents. He knows all those things. He sees every connection that made you who you are. God knows why you say things the way you say things, or think things the way you think things. He knows the connections. In fact, in this passage, even before you said those things or thought those things, he knew them. <laughs> because he's omniscient, he's the all-knowing God. Such is the foreknowledge of God. He knows about us before we knew about us or even thought the thought that we were going to think. Wow! <laughs> That's our God. And you know what? He does all that out of his love for us. 1 Peter 2, verse 9, you are God's special possession that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful life. Ephesians 2 verse 10, you are his workmanship, you are handcrafted, none other but the loving, saving creator God. You are his workmanship, you are made in detail to do what? Created to do good works in Christ Jesus. So you're laden down with this like handcrafted destiny to fulfill a life that brings praise and honour and extends the kingdom and mission of Jesus Christ upon the earth until he comes again. Wow! He's such planning for you. He searched you. He knows you. And so today, whatever you're facing today, however your mind's going, whatever this back holiday is doing for you, like a hot bath on a cold day, let the truth of the utter and intimate knowledge of God it's creating and calling of you soak into your bones and your soul at this time of chaos and at this time of chaos give you peace beloved let's pray Father God thank you for your just love and your knowledge and your wisdom Lord your insight into us thank you Lord that you know all about us. You know, nothing we do takes you by surprise. Um, Lord, sometimes we do things that takes us by surprise. It never takes you by surprise. And yet you still love us. You're still for us. You still forgive us when we come and repent. You stay sorry for what we do. And you still work out your purposes and your destiny, your calling upon our life. Lord, I pray for each one of us that right now we will drink in something of the sheer love of God, but the knowledge of God about us, something of the intimate relationship that we find in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for your love for us. Lord, you are good. You are good. And it's wonderful to have a father like you. Lord, we worship you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen.